Welcome back inside the Gallagher Event Center. We have the men's matchup between UCCS and visiting Black Hills State University. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jason Carter. Thank you so much for joining me. And it is a tall order for the Mountain Lion men as the Yellow Jackets come in with the number three national ranking. They are 20 and one on the season and they did beat UCCS earlier in the year by eight points up in Spearfish, South Dakota. So the Mountain Lions will have a mountain to climb, but they are certainly capable and it appears that they're getting at least a little bit more healthy as time progresses because they will have William Becker back in the starting lineup for the first time since January 14th. So that is good news if you're a Mountain Lion fan because Becker is a huge defensive presence. So starting lineups first for the visiting Yellow Jackets. They are gonna go with Joel Scott. We're gonna say that man's name a lot. He is the reigning conference player of the year. He is joined by a very, very good supporting cast. They would start at any school in the conference. Adam Musa, Kalen Hearn, PJ Hayes, and Matthew Ragsdale. Meanwhile, for UCCS, this is the starting lineup you want to see if you're a Mountain Lion fan. This is the starting lineup that got UCCS off to a 13 and four start on the year. This is the lineup you want on the floor. John L. Fuget, Benny Fungula, William Becker, Jesse McKenzie, and Mac Stardard are the first five out for the Mountain Lions who are in their home whites this evening. Now there is a theme going on here. Lewis Palmer High School up in Monument, Colorado, just about 15 minutes from here, maybe. One of the most successful high school programs over the last decade in the state of Colorado. Lewis Palmer has won four state titles in 10 years on the boys' side. We have four Lewis Palmer alumni in this game tonight. Three playing for Black Hill State, one for UCCS. Joel Scott and Matthew Ragsdale in the starting lineup for Black Hill State were high school teammates of UCCS' Noah Baca. Those three won a state title in 2019. That team went undefeated, and you can see why with three legitimate college players on their roster. And then Black Hills also has a freshman, Brady Jones, who last year won a state title with Lewis Palmer High School. So LP well represented in this contest, and we will say LP alum names a lot as this game progresses. Here's one of them, Joel Scott jumping it up against William Becker. And they're gonna re-jump it. So three seconds come off the game clock, two off the shot clock, but they're gonna re-jump the ball. <laughs> All right, here we go again. Becker, Scott, and Scott wins it. Ragsdale the drive in the easy layup for him. First two points belong to a Ranger. Two nothing. Uh, the shot clock did not reset correctly, so they will go talk to the scores table and give them an opportunity to reset it. Should be at 29 seconds, so 28, 29, somewhere in that vicinity. And they'll send each team to their respective benches. So, as I mentioned, Scott, Ragsdale, and Baca, all high school teammates who won a state title a few years back for Lewis Palmer. Ragsdale actually transferred in from Western Colorado, came to play with Scott in Spearfish. So, good bloodline certainly from LP High School just up the road here from the UCCS campus. All right, they got it figured out. They'll take four seconds off of the 30-second clock. Mountain Lions will have it on the far sideline. John Hill Fuget will get things started. Gets it over to Fungula. Benny 
between the legs, looking for Stoddard to post up. Doesn't get it, kicks it back out to John Hill. Down low to Becker, back out to Benny. Fungula left it off, but it's picked off by Scott. The reigning conference player of the year will bring it all the way up court. Hands it off to Hayes, who gives it to Ragsdale. Hearn from the free throw line, no good. Fuget has played lights out the last three ball games. His first shot this evening, however, off the back side of the rim. John Hill's averaged 25 points a game the last three contests. The Mountain Lions are going to need him. Kick out, three ball, good. That one out of the hands of P.J. Haynes, and already head coach Jeff Culver not happy with what he sees as Black Hills has a very quick 5-0 lead, and you do not want to let this team get out to a too big of a lead too early. As you can imagine, Black Hills with that number three national ranking well inside the national rankings when it comes to all the team stats as well. Defensively, second in the country in opponent three-point percentage, third in the country in overall opponent field goal percentage. So it is very, very difficult to score on this Yellow Jackets team. Becker in the lineup for the first time since January 14th, hands it off. They work it around, now it's back in the hands of Fuget. Becker, Fungula, Benny tried to drop it off again, kick ball. They're gonna call the kick on the Yellow Jackets. Stoddard will bring it in, gets it to Fungula who shoots right away and left it off the back side of the rim. Ball's tipped around and out of bounds. It'll stay with the Mountain Lions. Fuget and Becker played two-man game. Becker tried to get it to Fuget and had it and then lost it off of his knee and out of bounds. Fuget set a new career high in points scored last week when he dropped 33. Again, averaging 25 a game the last three games. Wow, great feed and that high school chemistry working well as Ragsdale finds his former teammate and current teammate, Scott, for his first two points. Jessa McKenzie working hard, one man game, gets it over to Fuget, out to Becker for a three, the big man left it short. Musa, kick out, turn, triple, good. So not only are they tough on defense, on offense, 12th best three-point shooting team in the country is Black Hills. McKenzie trying to answer, left it long. Good rebound though from Becker. The leading board man for the Mountain Lions has his first of the game. Kick into the corner, McKenzie stepped on the sidelines. Bracamonte and Jaden Washington check into the lineup for UCCS. Musa, kick, another three, no good. Musa with the offensive rebound. Wow, what a feed, and Joel Scott throws it down with authority. And Jeff Culver is not liking what he's seeing as his team finds themselves down 12 to nothing here early on. And they've already burned two timeouts. 
We're not even four minutes into the contest. The big lights are on, and so far Black Hill State is running away with it early on. UCCS looking to end a six game losing streak. They have been bit by the injury bug to say the least. Jezza McKenzie is gonna head to the free throw line. Mountain Lions started the season 13 and four but have lost six in a row. And a tall test to bring that to an end as they find themselves down a dozen early. Jezza left it short. Second one is good. So the first point of the ball game belongs to Jezza McKenzie. Musa, kick, corner. Three ball, good. Hearn left wide open in the corner, hits another triple. John L. Fuget has blocked by Joel Scott. Loose ball, saved, picked off by Washington. Fuget, three ball. There we go, John L. Fuget. First bucket of the contest there for the Mountain Lions. Three ball, no good. John Hill with the rebound. All the way into the lane. Fuget missed it. Great take from John Hill. Just couldn't get it to fall. Hayes to Musa. Thought about it. Got its way all the way over to Hearn, who got it down to Scott. Double teamed. Back out to Musa. Kick. Ragsdale. Good. Wow. Matthew Ragsdale with a triple. He's got five early points. And the Yellow Jackets are four of six from beyond the arc. Jezza couldn't respond. I mean, when things go well, they go well. What a tip pass there from P.J. Hayes inside to Scott, who has his second dunk of the game. You get Bracamonte with three on the shot clock. Long rebound to Musa. And we're going to get a flop call on Bracamonte on the shot. So that's an early tee for Bracamonte for the new flop call. That brings us to the media timeout. Black Hill State out to a big lead.
All right, the Mountain Lions give up a couple of free throws. Well, one free throw, Ragsdale knocks it down on the flop call on Bracamonte on his previous three-pointer. Jayton Hackley and Riker Sisarik checked in for Black Hill. Sisarik, the great feed, and Ragsdale the finish. Also checking in is Hoku Fisher, number zero. So three subs, Ragsdale and Scott, the only two who stay out there for Black Hills, while Suf Elkinen and David Gebetto checked in for UCCS. That ball was last tipped by the Yellow Jackets, so it'll stay with Mountain Lions. Stoddard, if you get. John Hill, guarded by Scott, got it down low to Mack, who was wrapped up by Hackley. Just like the Black Hill State women's team, the men's team heavily recruits the state of Colorado. They have six players on their roster. Get it out quickly to Fisher, who drops it off to Hackley, one of those Colorado high school kids from Douglas County, he drops in two more. Bracamonte for three, no good. Fisher, nope. And then they're gonna call Fisher for a flop. So the official's really on this new flop technical. One called on each team here through the first seven and a half minutes. So if you get, we'll take the free throw for UCCS. So John Hill has four of the team's five points. As Fungula, Becker, and Noah Baca all check in for UCCS. Baca was looking to make a backdoor cut. Stoddard thought he was going to stay out beyond the three-point arc, and the ball goes straight out of bounds. Got a shoe tying incident down on the other side of the court. That's what's holding us up at the moment. Benny Fungula relacing the kicks, and he is ready to go. Ragsdale, again, all by himself. Ooh, missed that one. Loose ball in the corner, picked up by Becker. Debeto, lefty. Tough shot, got it off, but it's off the mark. Rebound and a quick push by Black Hills. Left all alone again. And another essentially wide open three pointer, this one from Ciceric. And they're actually going to say his foot was on the line, so it was a very long two pointer.
Tibeto has it poked away, back out to Stoddard for three, no good. Rebound goes to John Shanklin. Ragsdale had a couple of screens to pick one, chose it, kicked it out. Fisher to Ciceric, back over to Ragsdale. Ragsdale, floater, no good, rebound, Benny. And Becker hit the deck again. Becker's had some lower body problems, but this time it looks like he got smacked in the face. It's kind of holding his nose a little bit. And that'll bring us to the media timeout as you see Becker talking to the official a little bit, how he got smacked in the face and didn't get a call. So we'll be back in just a minute. Black Hill State still out to a big lead. So Black Hills State doing just about everything right so far. They are 11 of 17 from the field as a team. 65%, they're 55% from three-point arc. While the Mountain Lions just won field goal through the first almost 10 minutes of this game. That's not gonna win you a lot of ball games. It was a three-pointer from John L. Fuguet who has four of the team's five total points. Black Hills yet to have a turnover either, so Mountain Lions not getting any extra possessions. As they'll have the ball in the front court, 10 18 to go. Bracamonte down low to Stoddard. Stoddard looking for a cutter and has it poked away. Is coming in from the weak side was Musa for the steal and out and running. Black Hill State just showing off. The alley-oop from Hayes to Scott. Fuget trying to push it a little bit. And more good defense there by the Yellow Jackets, Hayes this time has it rejected by Fungula. Bracamonte into the lane, lefty floater, no good, rebound, tipped out to Musa, quickly up to Hayes again who this time is going to throw it down. Stoddard, good finish at the rim for the big man. Back his first two points of the game. Scott for three, and it's good. When you're 6'7 and can shoot the ball as well as Joel Scott, there's a reason that he averages 22 and a half points per game. Good take by Fuget. John Hill 
The UCCS offense starting to come alive a little as they've scored on back-to-back -back possessions. Step back three, no good. Benny Fungula tried to finish at the rim and missed. Took a little bit of contact, Hayes. Baseline, kick out, three ball, good. Hackley that time with a triple from the corner. And the hot three-point shooting continues. Seven of 12 is Black Hills. Well, that one was just a tad long. Mountain Lions finally in double figures. About Took them only about 12 and a half minutes. And Fugette looking for some help. Gets a screen from Scottard. And then gets tied up. And one official had a jump ball call. The other had a foul. And the one who called the foul wins out. And it'll go against... Hackley, and that brings us to the under eight media timeout. Mount Lions in double figures, but Black Hill still up big. Thirty-eight to eleven in favor of the third-ranked team in the entire country, Black Hills State University. Quick three ball off the inbound. Oh, that's what we call a hometown bounce for Jezza McKenzie. A triple, his first field goal of the contest. I mean, great ball movement by Black Hills. They just missed the three-pointer. Got a wide open look. McKenzie driving baseline, kicked it out to Fuget, who puts up a three ball of his own. And John Hill with another triple. And the Mountain Lions back-to-back three-pointers. Musa, kick into the corner, three ball, no good. And finally, Black Hills starting to miss a couple of shots here and there. Giving the Mountain Lions an opportunity, that'll work. Quick alley-oop, Jaden Washington with the finish from Jessa McKenzie. Nice take and finish from P.J. Hayes. Bracamonte got his defender up, step back, another three, no good. Musa quickly up to Hayes and out of his reach.
Sisarak and Ragsdale back in the lineup for the Yellow Jackets. You get another two. He is the first mountain lion in double figures. He's got 11. Single-handedly trying to hold the mountain lions in this one. Scott behind the back working on Becker. It's going to pick up a foul on William. Just the first. The first team foul of the entire half for UCCS. Truly, this has been pretty clean. Only four total fouls between the two teams. Scott, spin move, couldn't finish. McKenzie, baseline, lost it out of bounds. Oh, they're going to say it was poked out by the Yellow Jackets. John Hill again, another step back with the defender right in his face. Good job by John Hill, continuing his hot play of the last couple of weeks. Musa gets a screen, works around it, kicks it out. Fisher, baseline. Another sh pass out to Scott, shot no good. Rebound, however, by Hackley, who then gets it swatted away. Jessa drops it off, Washington, no good. Musa. Hit every inch of the rim and then popped out. And that play off the hands of Jessica McKenzie will bring us to the under four minute media timeout. The lead has shrunk but it still stands at 17. Lions have started to figure things out a little bit. They are on a 14-2 run over the last four and a half minutes of game time. Unfortunately for them, that run started when they were already down 29. So still a 17-point deficit for UCCS. But they are certainly starting to figure things out. Ragsdale got away from his defender and kisses it off the window. He is now in double figures with 10. 
Washington trying to make up for it. Drops in three. Jaden Washington with the triple. Musa kicks it into the corner. Fisher, left all alone, responds accordingly. John Hill, if you get, continuing to play like a man possessed. He is six of his last seven from the field, and he's got a team high, 15 points. Ragsdale, though, comes right back at John Hill and drops in two more. Step back, three-pointer. Oh, Fugat is really feeling it. He's got a game high 18 now. However, he's essentially the only mountain lion who's really been able to do too much. Let's see if he can get some help here. That shot, no good. Fugat, oh, crossed him over, kicked it out to McKenzie who thought about it, got it to Bracamonte. One dribble, three-pointer short. And Black Hill State will take a 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here. John L. Fugat, 18 points on seven of 10 shooting, three of three from beyond the arc. He's also hit his one free throw, and he's got a team high four rebounds and an assist in a game high 16 minutes on the court. So if you get literally doing everything for the Mountain Lions here in the first half. Beyond him, Jaden Washington has five, Jaden McKenzie has four, and Fungula and Stoddard each with two. Musa working on Becker, got into the lane, now got stuck, fade away. Oh, wow. Over the much taller and very defensive minded William Becker, a great move there from Adam Musa. Into the corner, McKenzie gets around his defender, drops it off to Becker, but a foul was called before the play could finish off. So it'll be UCCS ball underneath the basket. McKenzie. I mean, kind of looked like he got his arm hit a little bit, but they're not going to call it. So the stuck ball results in a jump ball, which means it stays with the Mountain Lions because they have the possession arrow. So Stoddard will take it out. Gets it into Becker. William into the alley, dropped it off, had it tipped away. Picked up over midcourt by McKenzie. Jezza drops it off again to Becker. Little hook shot over Scott. William Becker drops in his first bucket. Shot clock is turned off under 30 seconds to go. So Black Hills will hold on for the last possession here in the first half. They currently have a 16 point lead. Musa out on the Mountain Lion logo, just dribbling back and forth. 10 seconds to go now. Eight, seven. Musa gets a screen from Hayes, kicks it out. PJ wide open, three, no good. Rebound picked up by Fuget, and that will do it. So it started off not very nice for UCCS. They were down 29 at one point, but have clawed their way back. They still trail by 16. But fresh start as they 
outplayed Black Hills, I feel like, over the last 10 minutes or so to cut this deficit nearly in half. All right, we're going to take a break. About 15 minutes or so, and we'll be back with the start of half number two. Mountain Lions will need a big comeback if they want a victory. We'll see you soon. My name is Al Wilson. I'm the main stage event coordinator for the Office of Student Activities, which is the department that brought you Roar Days. OSA handles everything from X to Z when it comes to the planning of Roar Days. We do the budgeting, the event coordinating, the execution, as well as partnering with other departments to really bring a successful week of events to campus. The whole point of Roar Days is to bring a week of events that kind of bring students together on campus when they're not in class. The weather's starting to warm up, and we really want to try to reach as many students as possible. We do different events that hit different demographics, the driving kind of focus towards commuters, the black light might be towards residential students, and we just try to reach all the students and bring them together. It's been incredible to go to school here the past few years and really get to be part of that community and see whether it's athletic events or a homecoming dance. Students always come out and they're always excited to be there. It's a really great experience. People should come see Aubergine because I think that even though it was written um, a few years ago and even though it's set in 2013, all of the themes are completely relevant. As I'm getting older and I see my parents getting older, it's kind of a window into the future in a sense and in a way it helps me come to terms with what I have to accept is offing in the future. I saw the show many years ago when it premiered at Berkeley Rep, and I saw it right after my mother had passed, and so I was just sitting in the audience like weeping, you know, hoping that no one was noticing, and I was in the back of the row, but it just completely moved me. On an e -wall. 저의 연극을 보러 오셔서 잊지 못할 추억을 만드세요. The majestic mountain lion, one of nature's most powerful predators. Primarily indigenous to the Americas, this big cat is known to make its home just about anywhere. Although most consider them to be solitary in nature, these big cats actually show advanced social intelligence. This cat is known to be territorial, and as such will fiercely defend its territory from other big cats, employing a blend of power and stealth, except during courtship. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. As far as I know, this is the only center in the nation that really integrates clinical services and undergraduate and graduate education and research. The Hibble Center is a result of leadership from two pillar organizations, UCCS and Centura Health, recognizing an opportunity and a need in the, for this community and coming together to make something very special happen. Students, teachers, researchers collaborating with our excellent caregivers at Centura Health is what's going to make this place super special. We have traveled the world, looked at all the wonderful sports medicine facilities, and can say that this is really the only true facility that brings the academics and the clinical 
peace under one roof. If you look at uh, the two organizations, UCCS and Centura, they've been long-term partners in the community, very committed to the Colorado Springs community, and I, I can't think of a better partnership. We found with Centura Health a shared vision and a commitment to create a sport medicine performance center that integrates undergraduate and graduate education, which is geared towards experiential learning as well as research. I would define sports medicine as a comprehensive care of athletes. The Hibble Center has everything you could ever want as far as an athlete or an active person, as far as equipment, personnel from athletic training staff to performance coaches to physicians, state-of-the-art radiology, MRI, ultrasound, real-time x-ray, um, everything you could want in a, in a one-stop sports medicine center. We understand movement, we understand biomechanics, and so when we're training our athletes, we know how to train them the right way. When you're sprinting, you're not just running down the track. We know your knee angle, your hip angle, how much force production you need. And so there's a lot of value in that for making sure what we're doing in sports performance training actually transfers to what you're doing in your sport. With the collaboration between UCCS and Centura, we have the opportunity to help be on the leading edge of new and improved medical procedures and treatments. I'm excited about the entire building, whether it's education, rehabilitation, whether it's actually dedication to increased performance, this building really has it all. When you look at our facilities, we've really designed the facility so you can do just about anything you'd want to do. For someone like me who studies altitude physiology, we've got altitude chambers, environmental chambers, we've got exercise labs, we've got biomechanics labs, we have rooms that are set up to do you know, sophisticated biochemical work. Everything is under one roof. We have 14 instructional spaces in this building. We only have five typical classrooms. So the rest of them are actually instructional laboratories which combine experiential education and then the traditional didactic education. You know, when you look at this project, I have to think of the vision of Venkat Reddy and Centura Health for what they are doing to truly have an impact on sports performance, education, and medicine within the Pikes Peak region, the state, and the nation. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention, hands-on experience. UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. The majestic mountain lion. The perfect combination of size and deadly agility. This big cat is capable of speeds of 40 to 50 miles per hour, when properly motivated. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. UCCS gives me the freedom I need with flexible courses and an inspiring campus. UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. I always dreamed of being an engineer. It encompassed everything that excited me when I was younger. And my first job in the military was an aviation mechanic, which kind of led me to come here to UCCS. UCCS fits a niche that none of the others do. It's the, that first generation kid that wants to go to college. And if we're able to successfully 
help that kid through college. They can become an incredibly productive member of the community and odds are, if they become a college graduate, their children and their grandchildren are gonna become a college graduate. It's gonna seem hard, it's gonna seem impossible, but it's not. I mean, I picked a pretty hard degree and I'm almost done. And I've been a single parent the entire time. 70% of our students work and go to school. First of all, I would love to see them supported, but they're also entering the workforce with that work ethic in their mind. That means they are gonna hit the ground running and make a difference for the organizations they work for. I've had some pretty hard financial crisis during my time in school. Um, adulting is hard, for sure. <laughs> but I'm not sure I would have been as successful during this time without that aid as I have been because after my first year, it's, it's been there, it's helped me, and I've continued to work harder because of it, because I don't want to let these people down. You know, they're investing in me and my future, and, and I want them to be proud of what they put their time and money into. When you provide a scholarship to a student, that scholarship helps that students get through school, graduate, and enter our community as an employer, as a leader, so really, at the end of the day, our community benefits when our students are supported with scholarships. I can't tell you how many managers I've talked to who say, I'm always worried about where my next employee is going to come from, and where my next professional is going to come from. And isn't it terrific that we have so many well-qualified and well-trained students coming out of UCCS who can fill my employment needs? That's a big economic driver for Colorado Springs and the Pikes Peak region. A gift to UCCS is an investment in the students. It's an investment in their success because that is what UCCS cares about. They care about whether or not these students graduate and go out into the world and be successful. When you make an investment in the next generation of professionals, you're really making an investment in our community. I always dreamed of being an engineer, and now that I'm so close to graduation, I've got an internship, I feel like I'm well on my way to accomplishing that dream. I probably felt a little like UCCS's men's team through the first uh, five minutes of this game. Just kind of not sure what's going on because Black Hill State rushed out to a 29 point lead. They were up 38 to 9 at one point. Then UCCS finally figured out and outscored them 24 to 11 over the last eight minutes of the game in order to get this deficit to what should be relatively manageable. 16 points is still a large deficit, but it's better than 29. So, and UCCS is gonna have to find somebody to score a basket other than John Ail Fuguet, because John Ail had 18 points in that first half. No one else had more than five for UCCS. While Black Hill State was led by Matthew Ragsdale's 12, Joel Scott had 11, and then their next scores went 7-6-5 points 
apiece. Adam Musa with a game high five rebounds. He tides John Hill in that category. While Jaden McKenzie, Jesse McKenzie, excuse me, has four assists. Musa with seven to lead everybody. So Black Hill State will have first possession here in half number two. Let's see if the Mountain Lions can continue their hot play coming out of the locker room. Scott split the defense, and he'll get a couple of free throws as he's unable to finish. Scott drops in the first. Joel Scott leads this team in points, rebounds, field goal percentage, blocks, and minutes played. He's also fifth in the entire country in double-doubles of the season with 10 as he hits both free throws. And he's now got 13 points. Nice pump fake there, good feed. Washington, however, has it blocked by Scott. Can't go up with lazy shots like that because this team will absolutely make you pay as Scott rejected that one. His second block of the game. There's gonna be a foul on Logan Bracamonte. Down low. Ragsdale off the inbounds, goes behind the back, drops it off to Scott, who looked to put an exclamation point down and threw it down too hard. Musa kicks it out. Joel will try from farther away this time. No good there either. You get great take. Can't quite finish, but he'll head to the free throw line. So Musa picks up his first foul. There were only seven total fouls in the first half between the two teams, so nobody even in relatively close foul trouble to worry about here to start things off as. John Hill drops in the first. He's got 19, looking for his 20th point. And he's got it. So if you get, again, as I mentioned, continuing his scorching hot play of the last two weeks. Musa tried to feed it into Scott. Good hands from Becker, though, to tip it away. It'll stay with the Yellow Jackets. Hayes into the lane, tried to drop it off into the corner, but good hands from Becker again. This time the Mountain Lions come away with the steal. Fuget gets a screen from William, gives it back to him on a little two-man game. Now Fuget's got it back once again. This time got a screen from Bracamonte, but didn't really create any separation. John Hill, though, between the legs, three-pointer, no good. Musa thought about it, fed it down to Scott, who was tied up by Bracamonte. Good quick feed in from Musa to a cutting Hearn, who lays it up and in. And Musa now has eight assists.
That foul up top on P.J. Hayes as Washington was starting to make his move. Stoddard checking in for Becker. Mack hands it off to John Hill, who's quickly picked up. Now it's got it back down to Mack, who's guarded by a smaller player, and one. Max Stoddard took the contact and finishes. And Stoddard can't finish off the play. Musa, another rebound. He's working on a double double. He's got seven rebounds and eight assists. Ragsdale. Dropped it back off to Hayes, kicked it right back out to Ragsdale, who worked his way into the corner beautifully and hits a three. Fungula into the lane, stripped. Scott tips it to himself, and Joel Scott is going to throw it down with authority. The LP Ranger alum, state champ here in the state of Colorado, is putting on a show in his home state. McKenzie trying to answer, left it short. Fungula fighting for it on the ground. They're going to call a jump ball finally, and possession arrow is with the Mountain Lions. Stoddard back out to Benny. Fungula took a couple of dribbles, got to the free throw line, elevated and knocked it down. Oh, John Hill couldn't quite come away with the steal. And that's going to bring us to the media timeout. So a jump ball, it'll be Black Hills State possession when we come back in 60 seconds. Fifty-eight thirty-nine. It's still a 19-point deficit as UCCS has been unable to cut into what was a 16-point deficit. Ragsdale 
Down low to Musa, working on John Ilfuget. Double team coming from Benny, kick into the corner. Scott, three ball, good. Joel Scott continues to light it up. He's got a team high 18 points. Bested in the game only by Fugets, 20. John Ill now with the ball. Oh, I mean, the handles for John Ill, just incredible. Unfortunately, can't finish. Kick out, three. It's good. Bracamonte responds with a triple. Musa looking for a screen, didn't get it, slipped. Got to the free throw line, elevates and knocks it down. Musa now with four points to go along with his seven boards and 10 assists. He may work on a triple double over the last 14 minutes. And they're gonna call Stoddard for a charge. Just one too many shoulders into the chest of Adam Musa for Max Stoddard. Finish at the rim there from Fisher. As he was able to use a couple of screens to create just enough space to get past his defender. If you get kick out, and it's went off the foot there, Fisher. Keegan Phillips comes in for the first time for UCCS, the freshman from Douglas County High School. And I gave LP a lot of credit. They have four alumni in this game. Douglas County High School actually has three alumni in this game, including Phillips, two more for Adams State. And at midcourt, we're going to have a block called on David Gibetto as he tried to get in front of the passer. They're going to say he did not get in front enough. Jayton Hackley, number two for Black Hills, and Ty Nettles, number 11, who hasn't played yet in this game, are also both Douglas County High School alums just up in the road in Castle Rock. That one's left short. Jezza drops it off to Bracamonte, back over to McKenzie for three, got it. Jezza McKenzie with a three ball, he's got seven. Musa, good. Phillips trying to get on the scoreboard, left that long ball sh uh, short. Musa, great feed to a cutter. McKenzie tried to come over and stop him, but fouled Ciceric. Jaden 
Tipped out of bounds by Black Hill State. John Hill got to the baseline and had Hackley all over him, so Hackley picks up his third personal. And after such a clean first half, we have double digit fouls here in the second half Chibetto off the inbound he and Washington basically occupying the same space they work it down to Keegan Phillips Phillips back out to Chibetto the lefty three ball no good if you get working hard down low just couldn't come down with it Hayes shuffled his feet a little bit too much. And that'll bring us to the under 12 media timeout. The deficit still pretty large for UCCS. We'll be back in just a minute. Seventy-one forty-five, the third ranked team in the country with a comfortable lead. John L. Fuget brings it over midcourt for UCCS. Noah Baca checked in in that last time out, so he'll probably get quite a few minutes here over the remainder of this game as a three ball from Gibetto in the corner falls in. Hayes trying to respond in kind, and he does. Gibetto down low to Phillips. Keegan rises over his defender, just couldn't finish. Foul's going to be on Ragsdale, his third. Phillips, the offensive rebound, but then has a shot rejected. Good job by John Hill to poke it away to get the ball back instantly for UCCS. Baca, down low to Phillips, bounce pass, Fuget, three, air ball. Washington, however, uh, excuse me, that was actually Gibetto, had the rebound, turned around to throw it off of a yellow jacket, but he was unfortunately standing out of bounds already when he went to go do it.
Good hands by Cheza to poke it away. UCCS will call a timeout, and it'll actually be the first coaches called timeout of the second half, which means we have another media timeout. We'll take another break. We'll come back with more of second half action. You're watching UCCS men's basketball. Black Hill State on the season averages just over 80 points per game. They are well on their way to hitting that mark as they currently sit at 74. So the buzzsaw that is the Black Hill State University Yellow Jackets men's basketball team looks like they will continue their very nice season. Yellow Jackets coming off an NCAA Final Four appearance last year, their first ever in program history, and they returned pretty much their entire team from last year. So no real surprise that they have been putting on an absolute clinic when it comes to their season. Their only loss coming at the hands of Colorado Mesa, who is ranked number 19 in the country. So Black Hills beating the teams that they're supposed to beat as Ragsdale drops in a long three-pointer, giving him 18 and tying him with Joel Scott for the team high number at the moment. Gebetto kicks it out to Keegan Phillips. Phillips working his way into the lane outside. They get it over to McKenzie. Jezza split a couple of Yellow Jackets, got to the rim, couldn't finish, rebound to the visitors. Fisher, crossover, great take by Fisher and the finish with the left hand. Noah Baca took some contact and now Noah will head to the free throw line. For Hackley, that's his fourth personal. And Noah Baca knocks down both free throws, his first two points of the game, and is replaced by John L. Fuget. Uh, Benny Fangula also came in to the lineup for UCCS. Yeah, and Fisher did a little bit of a shoulder wiggle and you saw his left pivot foot slide along the floor before he put the ball on the ground. So turnover on the Yellow Jackets. In case you're curious, that's only their sixth. Oh, Jezza got all the way to the rim. Looked like he got it partially blocked by Shanklin, but they're gonna call the foul on him, his second. Thank you. 
Jezza gets the first one to fall. Another three ball is knocked down by Hearn. He's got 14, and he's four of six from beyond the arc. Kick out, McKenzie looking to respond, does. Absolutely nothing but net from Jessa McKenzie. That puts him in double figures. He's got 12. A Little bit of garbage time, I feel like, for both teams here. Let's see who comes away with big numbers. Shakelin lost the ball out of bounds, and that brings us to the under eight media timeout. Black Hill State has pushed the lead out back big as they are up by 27. You get Phillips, Stoddard, and McKenzie, the five on the floor for the Mountain Lions. Meanwhile, for Black Hills, Ciceric, Musa, Shanklin, Tommy Donovan, 21s, checked in for the first time. And. So that ball is tipped out. A good hustle from McKenzie. Can't run it down. And the fifth player is Sava Ducic, who just checked in for the first time for Black Hills. Adam Musa with a great take and a finish on the other side of the rim. Musa, he's got nine, so he is one point and two rebounds shy of a triple-double. Oh, great crossover from John Hill Fuget. The handles for Fuget are unreal. And he made a great individual move to go baseline. Then Fungula comes away with a seal, pushing it the other direction. Benny, around three defenders, can't finish. Benny gets one and two from the free throw line. Oh. 
Musa pull up J, no good. Bangula got all the way to the rim, couldn't finish. Phillips did a great job there battling for the rebound. And if that's a foul, Keegan should be going to the free throw line. I mean, it's nine fouls, so at the very least, it should be a one and one. McKenzie quickly off of the inbound, no good. Musa comes down with the rebound, his ninth. We are officially on triple-double watch for Adam Musa. You get kick into the corner, an extra pass, and they're going to call a block on the drive as Fuget kicked it out, and stepping in front of him was Donovan, who's going to pick up the foul. Sue Falconen checking in for UCCS as Fuget knocks down both free throws and he's got a game high 24 points. Musa working on Stoddard, and Musa will head to the free throw line. Musa gets the first one. He's now in double figures, so Musa with a double-double, 10 points, 10 assists, and he's now one rebound shy of the always impressive triple-double. Do you get? Missed that one. Phillips soared in for the offensive rebound. Now Keegan with a hook shot leaves it a little short. Straight to the rim and finishing. And one is Riker Sisarik. Sisarik. And he makes the free throw. So back to the biggest lead, excuse me, the biggest lead of the game was actually 31. Lead currently sits at 29. If you get behind the back, again, it's great hands from John Hill to a kick out. Three ball for Benny Fungula. For Fuget, that's his third assist to go along with his 24 points and six rebounds. Musa, it's a screen. Now he's got Phillips on him. Fade away along the baseline, Adam Musa.
Phillips again a hook, missed it, and it's poked out. Hearn, one on three. A little bit of a wild shot there from Hearn. But when your team's up by 28, you can get away with shots like that. Bracamonte, three ball, no good. There it is. Triple double, Adam Musa for Black Hill State. 11 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. That is an incredible feat as a three ball is then dropped in by Ciceric. And you see Black Hills coming out and giving Musa high fives and hugs as they're not only gonna win this ball game, but a triple double is certainly something to behold. So that brings us to the final media timeout. 3.48 to go, we'll be back in just a minute with the conclusion of this game. So, now we're on 100 point watch for Black Hills State, six points away. Are they as Noah Baca brings it over midcourt? Phillips, Souf, Benny, Bracamonte, three is good. Logan Bracamonte with his second triple of the game, accounting for all six of his points. Logan did a good job again, hands in the passing lane. He's able to knock it away. Nobody there to pick it up, however, so it'll stay with the Yellow Jackets. Quickly into Shanklin, who doesn't get it to fall. Baca with the rebound, Noah. Over to Benny. It's Souf, back out to Phillips for three. Oh, Keegan Phillips has had a couple of shots rim in and out. He is 0 of 7 in the game. Had some really good looks, just cannot get him to fall tonight. Ciceric from way downtown left it short. Benny, Bracamonte again a three, and Logan's starting to feel it a little bit. Two straight knocked down for Logan Bracamonte. Post move was nice, missed the first shot, but Shanklin got his own miss and put it back up and in. That one's no good. Fisher brought it over midcourt. Cicere doesn't finish. alley -oop. nope, not gonna work out. Bangula tried to get Phillips some points, but it was picked off, and on the other end, Black Hills responds in kind. Ciceric on the receiving end of the alley. So
Souf, kick pass over to Benny. Down low to Keegan. Keegan's got to look out. Yeah, poked away from behind. Stolen by Hackley. Hackley up front. Fungula made him go up and under, but it's not going to matter. Triple digits for Black Hill State as they hit 100. Phillips just unlucky again. That shot no good as Baca comes down with it. First time all season, Black Hill State has hit triple digits. They came close. They had 97 against Montana State Billings way back in November. So for our Mac fans, this Black Hill State team, best chance to possibly bring home any sort of national hardware since the early 2000s when MSU Denver did it. So that is concludes this contest. Third ranked Black Hill State cruises to a 31 point victory, 169 over UCCS. The win improves Black Hills to 21 and one on the year while the Mountain Lions fall to 13 and 11. They are seven and 10 in RMAC play, six and four here inside the Gallagher Events Center. John Elfugat, another good game individually, 24 points, six rebounds and three assists. Jesse McKenzie pitched in 12 and five assists. Fangula had eight, Bracamonte had nine to lead the Mountain Lions. Joel Scott and Matt Ragsdale each had 18 for Black Hill State who continues their very good 22-23 season. So the Mountain Lions return to action tomorrow when they will take on South Dakota School of Mines as they look to end this seven game losing streak that they are currently on. That's gonna do it for this evening. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. The Black Hills State University basketball teams come away with a sweep over UCCS this evening. The women winning in a close one and the men in a 31 point victory. I'm Jason Carter for our entire UCCS crew. Thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you tomorrow evening, same time. Have a good night.